Last year, I covered the first season of Velma, which was the worst show I had ever seen up to this point on the channel, and I was certain that with reviews like these, there'd be no way they'd make a season 2 for this thing. They made a season 2 for this thing. In case you didn't know, I'm Invisible Bill, and this is Sardonic Summaries. Here we go. Velma and Daphne have relationship issues as they try to figure out what they mean to each other before they come across a dead cop in the forest. Remember Thorn from the Hex Girls? This is her now feel old yet. Thorn and her child, who don't matter at all, show up for no other reason than to make this brown gremlin jealous due to Daphne's interest in them. So, we are gonna keep it moving like they don't exist. Cool? Cool. While on her way to visit Not Shaggy, Velma runs into a random British guy who tells her she needs to be medicated before going home. Not Shaggy's dad literally tells him to smoke weed, get high, and not be so stressed all the time. Later that night, Velma's mom tells her to not solve mysteries anymore. She does that anyway. Fred is religious, by the way. But, who cares? Velma and Not Shaggy go to the morgue to investigate the dead cop's body, only to find that the body isn't there anymore. Ooh, Ominous. Daphne thinks that the culprit was her police moms and are using their influence as officers to cover it up. Fred thinks that the killer is Not Shaggy's grandma who came back from the dead as a killer ghost. And Not Shaggy's literally just along for the ride. After something happens at a party, Velma thinks that her mom is on a date with a real killer. She's not, though. The random British dude that Velma's mom slept with has gone missing, and also has herpes. Because of this, it's now an official police investigation, which means none of Velma and her unbearably annoying friends are allowed to play detective in the area, despite the fact that the local police force is known for its incompetence. Also, why did it take a man to go missing and not a man that was already dead for this to be an official police investigation? But if you're watching the show, you probably aren't here because it makes sense. You just want to see how stupid it can get. And it's about to get a lot more stupider. School is a contest to see who can put the most WD-40 on creaky hinges all around the town, and in order to win said contest, a random emo kid purposely stands in the middle of the street and waits for a car to hit them, and it's not a joke by the way, that actually happens. While trying to win this contest, Daphne and this random emo kid, the show wants us to believe is the real serial killer but is so obviously not, stumble upon the terrifying truth of what happened to the dead cop and the other British guy. Not only were they killed, but whoever killed them also removed. These nuts! Fred's not religious anymore. Not like anyone here cares. Daphne tells Velma that the emo kid, whose name I can't be bothered to remember, taught her about manifestation and the law of attraction or whatever. And while this is happening, Velma's mom is hooking up with... Fred's dad? Gross. Velma becomes a rich bitch after doing a stupid musical number about how she hates rich people. While flaunting her wealth around the school, there was a school science fair going on. And the projects featured at the science fair are... The origins of toast. Seeing how rats react to being called sexy and hot bitch. Actual literal law of attraction manifestation. And electroshock therapy. Oh, and this guy shows up too. Nothing of importance happened in this episode by the way. I hate this show. But hey, at least it took them all of three episodes before they reached a filler episode. Megamind couldn't even do that, as the second episode was a filler episode. Get it? But because the episode was about donuts, and it was a filler episode, and donuts have Daphne is pissed off at Velma, so she tries to set Velma on fire inside of a car before she walks inside the school. And unfortunately, Daphne is unsuccessful in this endeavor. As it turns out, all the characters of interest and Velma are in detention, and after referencing Lily Singh, they make a big deal about how the situation is nothing like The Breakfast Club, as they proceed to make an entire episode about how they are exactly like the Breakfast Club. For some reason, they decide to have a seance, and it gets them absolutely nowhere, both in the pacing of the plot and also in the helping of the investigation. The only thing of value to the overall story that we learned in this episode is that Not Shaggy's grandma might still be alive and not a ghost. Velma finds the body of the cop from like three episodes ago in the library, so, of course, the logical thing to do is to slander the new kid and blame said new kid for the murders. Daphne and Not Shaggy go to see if his grandma really is still alive, and upon their arrival, she immediately drugs them and takes them to a dark room. Turns out, she has been taking the brains out of people's heads and putting said brains into jars so the brains can mellow out for a bit. During all this, Velma, not unlike the show itself, goes up in flames after posting on the internet. Daphne and Not Shaggy's grandma swap brains. Cool. Speaking of brains in jars, the writers made the unfortunate mistake of making these useless characters from the last season relevant in this season. And so, the brain jar girl's brains are now dying. But who cares, we still have a new serial killer to catch, or did even the show forget about that at this point? Hard to tell. Dr. Purdue manipulates Velma into sneaking into the restricted area of a military base to see if Project Scooby is still up and running. 
it is. Fred almost goes on a date with the new serial killer who tells everyone at Fred's court-martial that she will keep killing until she gets what she wants. Since the police believe the killer is a woman, the logical thing to do in this situation is obviously to force every single female in town to live underground like mole people for 48 hours. The new kid tells the cops that they don't identify as female and, as a result, are exempt from the 48-hour underground timeout. But don't worry if this makes you suspicious because the new kid isn't the killer. And I'm not just saying that because I've already seen this show, because I haven't, but because I know a show like this would never go out of its way to make the only non-binary character the killer. Daphne is having an existential identity crisis, and all the other women underground put their brain power together and collectively agree that the killer is Velma's dad. What? The school takes a bus field trip to Sacramento, California, and on the trip, the new kid torments Olive and Fred without any provocation or reason whatsoever. Double G's father explains the truth about the new Project Scooby, but after he does, the bus gets flipped over on the way back home before we learn exactly what the dangerous new Scooby project is. It's a dog. So, it turns out that the main villain and new serial killer in this season of Velma is- ta -ta 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 -ta! Scrappy do? Are you fucking kidding me? Except not really, because Scrappy tells Velma in a cage that the real killer is Don, aka Double G's father. Sergeant Don GG's father! Also, he's not a sergeant. If he's wearing two stars, that means he's obviously a Lance Corporal, but whatever. Anyway, Scrappy Dappy Doo says that Don is the real killer and he's being framed by Don. Except, not really, not really. It was definitely this dog that is totally evil. And not because I've already seen the show because I haven't, but because this dog is literally a bad, evil dog that will try to make us think that he is innocent right before the big reveal. Sorry, Velma. Turns out, I am the killer! <laughs> <sighs> what did I tell you? So I ask, who's really the villain here? Them or me? You are. You bit their dicks off. <laughs> Velma tells the mutt that she already knew he was a bad dog and devised this plan to make him confess and get him arrested. However, Scrappy tells Velma that he knew that she knew that he was evil all along and he had a plan to counteract her plan so he can make a getaway with somebody named Uncle Scooby. Usually, I'm all about the oh, I saw you seeing through my plan so I plan to plan to plan against your plan to stop my plan's plan kind of thing. But for some reason, I just really hate seeing it here. Maybe it's because the show kind of blows. I don't know, you tell me. The ghost of Fred's mom literally gets sent to hell and that's it for this episode. Cool. The next day, there is a double wedding with four people I don't care about. Vaphne and Delma pull a Freaky Friday and swap brains while playing undercover with each other's lives in order to figure out Scrappy-Doo's master plan and beat him. During all this, Dr. Voodoo turns out to be working with the mutt. Oh yeah, this happens too. Velma confronts Dr. Purdue about working with Scrappy before she is ambushed by Uncle Scooby and is put in a jar before a brain jar falls on the ground and she dies. <laughs> Velma, you're alive! Damn it, I can't have anything, can I? Turns out Uncle Scooby was Velma's soon-to-be stepmom all along. She was fed up for not being taken seriously as a woman in the military, so she teamed up with a dog who has the same superpower as Captain Man in order to kill a few dozen people and run away with an invincible talking dog. Yeah, that makes sense. Speaking of this dog, Scrappy manages to get into the mansion where the wedding is being held and tries to kill everyone before he is shot with a missile. But, like I said, he's invincible, so that doesn't kill him. And neither does the gun that Double G's dad tries to shoot him with, but whatever, I guess. But what does kill him is Velma, who is also dead. For, for real this time. She got caught in the blast with the missile and now she's a ghost. And that's it. That's Velma Season 2. If I'm being honest, the second season is definitely a step up from the first season by a long shot, but it's also not perfect by a long shot either. Half the characters mattered, the other half didn't. They kept on trying so hard to make you think that the serial killer might be the weird, kinda spooky new kid for the first 8 episodes or so, but it was so obviously not that it was kinda sad they even tried that. Then, for all of 15 minutes, they tried to make you think the actual killer wasn't Scrappy, but it was so obviously him that it was kinda sad they even tried that. The pacing of the show is kind of all over the place, and just like the first season, I feel like the story could have definitely been condensed down to 8, hell, maybe even 6 episodes, as opposed to having the 10 we did for this. Am I gonna watch the show again just for fun? No. But, will I recommend this show for someone else to watch for fun? No, I think my favorite thing is the fact that it ended with Velma being dead. She is still the worst character in the show, and while the second season doesn't make her as painfully unbearable as the first season did, she still is not at all a character I enjoy seeing on my screen. 
The ending itself was interesting, I guess. I was not expecting them to actually kill off the main character. Usually that's some anime-only type stuff, you know? But you know what? Props to them for actually being able to do it. Even though they brought her back as a force ghost literally a minute and 13 seconds after killing her off. But in my opinion, this show is still pretty meh. Thanks to all 1,252 of you for watching. Like and subscribe for more.